Ze redden de reinforcements van Nandit. Ze hebben het nummer 5 to 1. Zo, dat is helemaal zo. Volk is de artillery along likely avenues of approach. Do you think it will stop them, sir? 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 Welcome back to the Forge of Sagas, and today we're going to be taking our first step towards building our skirmish level terrain collection. And to kick off this series, we're going to start from the ground up by building some craters. Now the nice thing about craters is that they're very universal. They can be in a sci-fi setting where you've got high explosive artillery shells, or in a fantasy setting where boulders are being hurled by massive siege artillery. Or, you know, giants that don't play golf well. And they offer a lot of rules benefits. They can give you cover to increase your armor class or saving throws, or they can be difficult terrain that slows your movement, so you can get a lot of value out of a very simple build. So let's get started. To get started, we're going to take some graphics medium chipboard and trace out some circles on it. I made some stencils, but if you're really good at drawing circles or you have a compass, you can use those as well. These circles are going to represent the interior of the crater, so I'm going to pull out some scissors and I'm just going to cut a rough irregular shape around that, which is going to form the exterior part of our crater. This space is really important because it's what's going to allow us to slope the earth away from the point of impact, giving us that crater shape. Now that our shape is cut out, we're going to start grabbing foam. We're looking for pieces shaped roughly like this, where there's a little interior that's going to form the crater and then we want it sloping towards the outside. Now these are offcuts from my demonic smelter project, but you can get them from anywhere. You know, tear them up from full blocks or use the offcuts from any projects you make. Now I ripped some of these up with my hands, but I also took this time to practice cutting with my hot wire tool. It doesn't matter if your cuts aren't incredibly precise because we're going to cover these foam pieces up later. You just want to have that general shape. We're forming the skeleton of what our crater is going to be later. Once we've made our full ring of foam, we're going to start laying down some spackle. So you're going to want to mix this up, and I'm going to add some brown paint. If you guys remember from the Demonic Smelter video, I did not do this, and my spackle cracked in a few places, and you could see this bright white color. So I'm going to fix this this time by mixing in some brown paint, because brown is that kind of general earthy color. And for the different types of crater we're going to make in this video, that's the undercolor I want. So... Now we're going to start mixing that into our crater. You want to start in the center and work your way to the outside because that's going to naturally draw the faux earth that we're making with the spackle towards the outside. Much the same way that when an explosion happens, dirt is forced from the point of the blast at the center out towards the sides. So as I got to working on the outside, there was a few places around it where the cardboard started to sag. So one of the things you could do to remedy this is apply some Mod Podge, or don't mix in nearly as much water as I had mixed into this particular batch of spackle. Now, I got very lucky in that this crater did not warp, because when the spackle dried, it pulled itself back together. But that is just something that you should be aware of. And I got lucky, but I would say in the future, you know, a little less water in the spackle, or just put a layer of Mod Podge on it. So, I let that set for, you know, about an hour. Then I came back and just started pushing the edges. This is what's going to create that pushed up layer around the outside, that rim that we're so accustomed to seeing when we've got a crater. I also did a little bit of work to smooth out the outsides. Just, you know, again, we're trying to sculpt this base layer, make this thing look good. I let it set for another hour, so that's two hours from initial application for those of you keeping track at home. And now I went in and I started carving up the cracked earth. So I took my putty knife and I cut in some incisions where I knew that there were gaps in the foam and it just started to drag my knife from the center towards the outer edge of the crater. This gives it that impression that there was a very forceful blast and that not only was dirt thrown everywhere, but also the ground itself was kind of cracked in places where there was a lot of stress, but it didn't completely crater. I came back and now we're an hour three, so again an hour later, and just started to reinforce those lines. You can see it's already starting to have that more realistic rocky texture. You can see where the blast occurred and where all the earth has been forced up. And that's really what we're looking for across the board. Just keep working at it until you are satisfied with what you've got. And here we go. Nice finished product, nice blasty looking crater. I'm pretty happy with it. 
So we've made one, but that's not really going to be enough for our purposes. So we're going to build a whole lot more. One thing I want to mention when you're doing these compound craters, you want to pick one crater to be the dominant crater. This is the crater that happened last because that's the one that will create a full ring. Any of the previous craters will have been disturbed by the most recent one, so they're only going to be semi or otherwise incomplete circles. After everything was dry, I came in with this beige primer because, well, it was what I had laying around. And then I started putting down this brown base coat. This is going to simulate the earth that was under the ground but has now been exposed by the blast from, you know, the explosive, the rock, whatever it is that fits your particular setting. We just want to get that down, not only in the craters themselves, but also in any of the cuts that we made going out from the crater, because that's the cracked earth that's showing through, so it shouldn't have the surface tones, it should have that brown underlayer. So now let's talk painting colors. This is a battle mat that I have. I got this from Studio Level Terrain with their Garbuk Shrine Kickstarter, and I'm going to do my craters based on this first to complete a terrain set that I own. The first color we're going to add after that brown is a standard gray. This is going to help give it that nice stony color that we saw in the battle mat, this more tundra-y feel, where the earth underneath that brown stuff, that's all frozen, so we get this more gray exterior. One key thing is to keep your paint out of the deep gaps because those are the cracks in the earth that should be revealing that brown. Next, I'm going to come in with a heavy brown wash. This brown wash is following the Black Magic Crafts recipe. I will put a link to his video where he makes this in the description. This wash is going to pull out those recesses, plus it's going to make it seem like there was a little bit of dirt overall that's come out of the crater and is stuck to the gray top layer. Next, we're going to grab an olive drab. We saw that little bit of vegetation that was in the battle mat, and I want to have a little bit of that in the cratering as well. Like, there was some vegetation before it was blown away. So I'm going to take off most of the paint on this newspaper, you can take it off on your palette, and then just stipple it on, just to give it that little hint of green amid the very desolate tundra. The paint wasn't still quite that cold, icy color I wanted, so I took some stormy blue and the gray craft paint, and I kind of mixed that up, and again, just did a very light dry brush over the piece, just to give it, again, a little cooler texture, dial back some of the places where I'd gotten a little excessive with some of the mud and some of the green, and just generally tie the piece together. After all that was done, I came with just a little bit more brown just to kind of touch up the edge of the crater. That should still have some decent amounts of dirt on it because that's where the explosion kind of capped out. So that should be that transition between the external color of whatever the surface is and the interior color of the crater. Now that all the paint's dry, it's time to add some flocking. I'm just adding some PVA glue. I'm doing it this way because my nozzle was clogged and I didn't really feel like fixing it at the moment. And then I just grabbed a sponge brush and just spread that around nicely. I chose this more brown flocking because it matched a little bit more of the tundra feel and the colors I was seeing on the battle mat. You should be able to find this kind of flocking at any hobby store, just have to look around a bit. I also decided to add this little piece of moss to simulate some lichen. Again, this is the kind of vegetation that you would see on the tundra, so just blend that in with a little bit more flocking and you're good to go. And here you guys can see I've just taken the craters now that they're done, and I've laid them out on my battle mat. I think they look really nice, and they blend in well with this tundra style of terrain. And the best part is, you can move them around, maybe take a little bit of stone to blend them in. I debated adding some snow, but I felt like that would have been melted by the impact of the blast, so I didn't add any at this point. And now it's time for a little two-for-one special. Yes, for this red versus blue project that I'm doing, we're going to make some grassland craters as well. So I started with a nice foliage green. I'm just going to, again, exactly the same way we did it with the gray, give it a strong overbrush. Try and keep it out of the craters, but still coat the entire model. Then I'm going to grab that olive green and come around and do a little bit of a, not an overbrush, but a slightly heavier dry brush. This is going to create some distinctive colors, give it a little bit of a shift, much like you would see a couple of different varieties of grass growing on any grassland. Next, I'm going to grab my brown, I'm going to come in and again, repaint the lip, and in my case, I got a little overzealous with some of the cracks when I was putting in the green, so I'm going to have to add a little bit of brown back into those cracks, really bring out that cracked earth feel. Once that's done, we're going to come in with another heavy brown wash, same reason as before, it's just going to give it that dirty feel, like the dirt has been really blown out of this crater and is still in the surrounding area, despite it being still mostly green. Now it's time to flock. 
I'm going to add a lot more PVA glue to this because on a grassland we expect to see more foliage. I'm starting with the brown foliage as a base to simulate some brush that might have been singed by the blast. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to come in with a brighter green because that would be the dominant color of a grassland. It's certainly the dominant color we see in Blood Gulch. So this mixture is going to really give it a nice blend of colors that's going to make it really visually appealing on that kind of a grassland table. And here we have our finished set of grassland craters. And with a quick reference to our checklist for our skirmish terrain board at Blood Gulch Outpost, we can see that we are set for craters. I built a few extra just because I was still experimenting and playing with things, but if you're just trying to build a skirmish, you only need to build what I suggested. But wait, there's more! Stay through the end of the video and we'll show you how to make this desert crater full of sand. So we're going to start off with a very light tan and that we're going to put through the entire crater. We no longer need this muddy under earth. That doesn't happen in the desert. Once we've got that on, we're going to come up with an even brighter tan, almost getting towards off white. This is going to help us show the light is reflecting off the sand. It's hot. It's bright. It's the desert. Once the paint was dry, I coated the entire crater in PVA glue and poured this diorama sand over it. It's got a nice texture and it really fills out some of the gaps because we won't have these cracks in a sandy crater. We'll have it a little bit, but not nearly as defined as we would in the other two. I then took my brush and tried to pull the sand towards the outside of the crater to help give it that cratery shape. Once that's done, we're grabbing our reliable brown wash and we're gonna give this a nice coating. This is gonna seep in between the grains of sand and help give it a little bit of shadow, a little bit of texture. I'm focusing my wash a little bit in the center, just again, to give it a little bit of shadow, a little bit of color differentiation before I come in with a dry brush. Again, we're going back in the same two layers we did last time. Starting with that kind of desert sand, then going up to our little bit brighter tan. This is going to reinforce that differentiation of colors and give it that nice realistic feel. I only ended up making the one of these because, to be honest with you, I had no idea whether this was going to turn out or not, and I was pleasantly surprised by the outcome. And there you have it. Three different ways to make craters for your terrain collection. Now if you want something more volcanic themed, check out my Demonic Smelter video. There I go through my entire process for making volcanic themed terrain. Now if you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date not only on this series, but on all the other projects we do here. I hope you enjoyed yourself today, I hope that you learned something, and most importantly, I hope to see you again the next time we ignite the Forge of Sagas.